Hello, the Darkness 344 here, and in today's video, I'll be showing off this multiplier that I've designed. So, it's not fully finished yet, um, because, well, this is an 8 bit multiplier, but you only get the lower half of the result, because if you multiply two 8 bit numbers, you'll get a 16 bit number. So, th there, is, there are a few issues with that. Um, however, uh, normally you only really need the lower half and you can technically just use this as a 4-bit multiplier and just ignore the top uh, bits and, and just work with the lower half. So I will actually at some point implement 8-bits. I've been working on this one over here which uses pretty much the exact same design. Um, I'm just having a bit of difficulty with timings and stuff but it shouldn't be too hard. Basically, um, the way this multiplier works is it's a... Um, sequential multiplier, so you have several different types of um, multiplier, redstone multiplier, you have combinational ones, you have sequential ones, but basically what this means that is instead of having multiple adders like in a row, um, it, just is, it just uses one adder and it will clock itself um, for the multiplication or whatever, so yeah, plus the name sequential because it, it clocks itself, but um, there are a few issues, um, one being it, it can be slightly slower than combinational multipliers, however um, it makes up for it in its size as it's a lot more small. Um, so this multiplier um, has a 5 hertz, not 5 hertz even, 5 tick um, data loop, which means it's a 2 hertz uh, data loop. Yeah, that, that I think that makes sense. So we can just input any number over here. So so let's just 2 times 2, for instance, and if we just click this button, it'll give us our result, and 2 times 2 is 4, as we can see. So, we can of course change this, so let's just um, say 3 times um, 5, which should be 15, so 1, 1, 1, 1, there we go. So as you can see, it takes a bit of time. Um, if we try for the max time, which is, um, I think it's 5 times... Um, uh, zero zero one one zero zero one one. Uh, this should be two five five. Um, there we go. As you can see, it takes a bit of time, but it still it still comes out with the answer in the end. So, um, it's not the fastest multiplier. Um, there's much faster designs. Um, especially, well, because it's sequential as well, it's not exactly fast either. But, so so I know if you use, say, like a, a serial design, um, I think Mr. 77 has a, a video on it, but I, th I think it's his Java only, but it can technically be modified to bedrock with some trickery on the inputs. But, basically, it, it's just compact and it's a small multiplier, and, well, you have one button. So this button actually does two things, it, it will reset the um, accumulator circuit, the data loop. So basically, well, let, let's actually explain how this works. So first of all, um, I'm going to recommend you go ch out, check out Matt's Batwing's video on multipliers because this works in exactly the same way as his, what his does in the video. It's just a bit faster, well, quite a lot faster, well, by two ticks, um, at least a data loop. And that's due to the um, adder I've used, which is by uh, Dom from the All server. Um, yeah, I'll, I may do a tutorial for this one day. Um, this multiplier I'll probably do a tutorial for though. But um, yes, it's a 3 tick carry cancel adder, and then we just have the output of the carry cancel adder going back into the input, and we have two repeaters, so one here and one here, and we could probably there's you can definitely make this um, faster uh, probably at least on this carry cancel adder you can make it um, down to um, four ticks instead of five ticks but um, it might make the design a bit better a bit bigger you might need to do some comparative subtraction and stuff and I can't be bothered to do that so over here is the input section and all this does is um, we have a pulse generator over here that generates a 5 tick pulse and that's a 5 tick pulse because the data loop is 5 ticks. So what happens is when you um, pulse this it will generate a 5 tick pulse which will unlock these comparators 
So we have the A input and the B input. It will unlock the comparators on the A and B, which will let the data through for five ticks exactly. And then it will go into this second part over here, which um, on the, uh, let's say, A input, um, the data will flow down. So as you can see, it goes through this block, through this repeater. So if it, if it is a one, if it's a zero, it's the zero is technically going to flow down, but it's, yeah, it'll, it'll just be off so that the zero will flow down. So basically what happens, what to, to put this in better words, um, every five ticks, it will get shifted down or um, right by one. So every five ticks, um, the A input will get shifted right down by one, and every five ticks, the B input will be shifted um, left or up by one. So what happens is all these get shifted um, down by one, and the output um, goes into this torch. So um, for instance, if we have um, the number 101, one, um, on the first um, five ticks, will have this torch will turn off on the second five ticks the torch will turn back on because of the zero will be now here and on the third five ticks um, it'll turn back off again uh, because of the one here then it'll turn on again for all these and then the same things for this side it just goes up instead so I would heavily recommend um, checking Matt Bat Batwing's video on um, binary multiplication because he actually does a pretty good explanation but it's similar to real multiplication, so let's actually uh, do a terrible demo. So let's just do um, 1, 0, uh, 1, 0, so 10. And let's times this by um, 3, which should equal 30, so 1, 1. So first of all, we're going to do uh, work on the least significant bit. So 1 times 0 is 0. Oops. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 1 of course is 1. So now just like um, real numbers, well base 10 numbers, um, because we're working in the next um, significant column, so this would be the 2 column, so you have 1, 2, 4, 8, um, just like you have um, 1, 10, 100, 1000. So since we're working on this, um, we have to add a zero like this um, because we've, we've shifted over one. So now we do the same thing as we did over here. So one times zero is zero. One times one is one. One times zero is zero. Then we have one times one, which is of course one. So now we have um, these two numbers and what we're going to do is just add them together. So zero plus zero is zero. Then we have 1 plus 0, which is 1. We're going to have to be careful of the columns. So then we have 0 plus 1, which is another 1. Then we have 1 plus 0, which is 1. Then we have 0 plus 1, which is 1. So this is our answer. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, which should be 30. Um, let me just check it is. And yeah, it is, it is 30. So, so that's how, um, kind of how um, binary multiplication works. You, you do it just like real life. Um, and these would be, um, if, if you can see, if you spot the pattern, there's, it's, it's very simple to do some uh, for the logic because you have, so whenever you have, this, this is an and if you can see, because you have one and one, which is a one, but whenever you have something else, so zero and one, it's a zero. So as you can see, this is a logical and. So it's, it's not exactly hard to do with um, logic gates. So yeah, that's how the binary multiplication part works. So we have the shifting and stuff. And then this is just the add a circuit. And yeah, we, we have the answer out here. So yeah, I um, hope this video was interesting. I'll leave a world download to this in the description. And I'll probably be using this on one of my, uh, well, my upcoming computer project. So yeah, and I think in the future, I'll also try make a division module and possibly a square root one as well just to complete the the lot which they all use very similar circuits but yeah i hope you like this video please like and subscribe and i'm out